We have to have fresh, clean garments to wear for yontas. We have to set the table. Make the house clean. Wash the floors, do the laundry. Clean our clothes. What are your clothes, your thoughts, your speech, your actions? These are your clothes. These are the clean clothes we need for Yonta. We have to prepare for a special guest who's coming. Here she is. We just said we have to prepare for a special guest who's coming and you walked in. Today is our last class before Yontif. Who's on the Zoom? Hannah Sternberg. Good morning, Hannah. Esther. Good morning. Good morning. Is that Esther Eliyav? Eliyav? Yes, it's me. That's you. Okay. Yeah. Glad to have you with us. Michal Fernandez, buenos dias. No bananas this morning, Michal. No bananas. Rojo Prince Salou. <coughs> Ariel. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to take a risk. Within five minutes, Danny Hess is going to walk in. Well, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. The sister came in and said, within five oh. minutes, I predict Danny Hess will walk in. <laughs> wow, the prophecy over here. <laughs> we had to be prepared. Am I going to see you girls on Sunday night? Yes. Yes, one o'clock. I may be a little late. What? That's really late. Because <laughs> we, 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 yeah, with the meals. Doesn't finish by one o'clock usually, but I'll try. Really? Wow. I, I don't know. I always go to sleep early um, in the dorm. Here. Get a good sleep. Rest up so that you don't fall asleep on Shavuos. We don't want to sleep on Shavuos. Oh, yeah. I that the Jewish different. people at Mount Sinai went to sleep. They thought that that was the best preparation because when you go to sleep, you're personal powers, soul powers, <coughs> are relaxed. So they're open to something higher than your particular IQ, your particular limitations of character or your mindset. So you turn all that off and you open yourself up to something much bigger. Sometimes people in their dreams have visions of things that they never think about during the day. Prop, like prophecy. So they went to sleep in order to receive the Torah from Hashem, but that's not what, Hashem didn't want to give us a Torah in that way. He wanted us to receive the Torah down to earth. So he told us down to earth things that any sensible person would figure out by himself. You can't have a kingdom 
if we're supposed to be the kingdom of Hashem, he's going to be our king and we're going to be his people. So you can't have riots. You can't have rioting. There has to be respect for people's property. There has to be respect for people's families. You can't have people stealing or killing, committing adultery, cursing, jealousy. Kingdom can't run if everybody's jealous and resentful of everybody else. There has to be harmony and peace and love in the kingdom. These are down to earth logical ideas. Of course, if you're gonna have a kingdom, you have to have a king, so you have to have loyalty, right? You can't have a kingdom with no loyalty. You can't have a kingdom of rebels. <clears throat> they'll overthrow the king and they'll take a new one and overthrow him too. You can't have a kingdom of rebels. And you have to have respect and the respect has to be for the people on your block and the people who are ruling in your taking care of the neighborhood, there has to be respect for the people who collect the garbage or they won't collect the garbage. You have to have respect for the people who, the police who keep law and order. You have to have respect for the people who are elected to have responsibility over the whole neighborhood. You have to have respect for the governors and for the, the rulers, the king. You don't have respect the kingdom won't stand. It won't stand. So these are the laws. These are the Ten Commandments. I'm, I am your king, says Hashem. I took you out of the land of Egypt. I'm going to be your king and you're going to be my people. So number two, don't go looking for another king. Don't have any other idols. Don't worship any other forces. They're, they're, they're my, the other forces are my servants. They're not worthy of being worshipped. They do what I tell them to do. Respect my name. Respect the name of the people who are above you. Respect your wife. Respect your husband. Respect your children. Don't abuse them. Respect other people. Don't steal. Don't murder. Don't commit it. Don't take someone else's wife. Don't think you can take someone else's wife for yourself. Don't think you can take anything from your neighbor. Don't even think about thinking about taking something from your neighbor. That's, that's very high. Don't, don't even think about touching something that doesn't belong to you. A woman once came to the Fili Rebbe and gave him her hand. He said, I'm sorry, don't take it personally. My father raised me not to touch something that wasn't, didn't belong to me. It's a modern fallacy here in America that everybody can touch hands and hug and kiss and so on. On the television, you see it in the movies. One time the Rebbe Maharash had to go with a, a, a very high Jewish leader to visit the royalty. And the queen gave them her hand they were, they were told to take off their hats. So afterwards, this other big Jewish leader said, wow, that was very so embarrassing. So the Maharaj, I wasn't embarrassed. He said, how can you not be embarrassed? You had to take off your hat. He said, I was wearing a toupee. He wore a hairpiece over his hair. I know somebody, he worked for, for, for Wise Potato Chips in England. When I lived in England, he was a, a convert. He became a Jew. And they told him, you cannot, if you want to be Jewish, fine, you can have Saturday off, don't come to work. But you can't go around wearing a, 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 a yarmulke or a, a hat. He wrote the Rebbe and said, what should I do? I'm going to lose my job. The Rebbe said, wear a toupee. You know what that is, a toupee? A hairpiece. Wear a, a, a wig, a mask and a wig. You know, like people who get sick, they lose their hair, they wear a hairpiece. I said, wear a hairpiece. He said, but you had to shake hands with the queen. He says, I was wearing gloves. Very, very thin pair of gloves, like, like we have nowadays, medical gloves. It didn't. Okay, but, but you know, that's already getting into fine details. If you think about the Ten Commandments, what they are, it's, it's, a, it's a very logical system of law and order. 
predicated on the belief in, a cre in the creator. And any system of law and order that isn't, doesn't start with the belief in God, it will become cruel and barbaric. And they will make gas chambers and torture chambers for the Inquisition or for the Aryan race. Okay, so <clears throat> that's, the, that, that's something I wanted to tell you about the Ten Commandments before Shavuos. Another thing I want to tell you to get ready for Shavuos, very, very important, because this is in effect as of now. On Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, you with me, Toam, at Shamat? Yes. The Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Katuv, it says, <coughs> <coughs> that on Rosh Hashanah, we blow the shofar. And at the end of Yom Kippur, we again blow the shofar. <coughs> and this signal signifies many different things. One of the great sages, Rabbi Sadia Gowen, listed 10 things that the shofar stands for. It reminds us of the self-sacrifice of Yitzchak. Like we said yesterday, when we say Shema in the morning, we have to be ready to give up our life for the sanctification of the name of God. I believe in God and I don't care if you kill me for it. That's what it means. And we have that strength from Yitzchak and from Abraham, <coughs> Abraham Avinu, and, and millions of our ancestors who did exactly that. So that's one thing that the shofar reminds us of, that we have to be ready to give our lives in the sanctification of the name of God, and not, and not to abandon our faith in the one God. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. That's the shofar that's blowing on Rosh Hashanah. The shofar also blows at a coronation of a king. On Rosh Hashanah, we crown Hashem king over us. And becoming king over us, he becomes king over the whole world. That's why the non-Jews hate us. Because they don't want to accept the kingship of God upon them. And the fact that we do, just that fact alone, drives them crazy. The shofar also calls people to a meeting. When the shofar blows on Rosh Hashanah, it calls all of us to be present at the coronation of the king. With trumpets, we crown Hashem king. And with trumpets, we go to war against the enemy. The enemy is the Sahara. So all these things, are symbolized by the, the Russia, by the shofar on Yom Kippur. So the, the shofar is a call to us to cleanse ourselves and get ready to receive, to take upon ourselves the kingship of God. Right? That's on Rosh Hashanah. And now I want to tell you something very important. So listen carefully. You're listening, Hama, Esther, Toam, listening, that the, the shofar is blowing now. The shofar is blowing in heaven right now. Because we're standing in front of the mountain. And when the Torah was given, it says clear in the Torah that there was thunder and lightning and the fire, the mountain was on fire. And there was a shofar blowing, getting louder and louder and louder. Unlike an ordinary person blows, he runs out of breath. This shofar didn't get less, it got more and more and more. And what was the shofar? The shofar was the horn that was taken from the ram of Yitzchok, connecting the two concepts that Yitzchok was ready to give his life for God as a, as a holy offering. And Hashem, every part of that ram be, had a holy use and a holy purpose, eventual purpose. One of the horns of that ram was blowing in heaven at the giving of the Torah. And every year, we said when we we celebrate Russia uh, Shavuos, we re that whole experience repeats itself, and the the horn of 
the ram, the ram is blowing in heaven. We don't see it like we did at Mount Sinai, but it's happening now spiritually. And our neshama hears it. And our neshama is very awakened, very aroused. And just like at Mount Sinai or Rosh Hashanah, we feel a trembling within ourselves that we don't want to be, heaven forbid, found wanting and unacceptable to be citizens of the king, to be loyal subjects of the king of kings. We want to be accepted. So now too, in our heart, we have the same trembling before God at Mount Sinai. It's happening now. And another thing about the shofar on Rosh Hashanah is that it confounds the Yetz Sahara. When you make a good decision that you want to be better, you want to behave better. You don't want to be selfish. You want to remember to make a brach after you eat or drink. You want to remember to be good, to be kind, to be considerate, to be respectful. The Yetzirah comes and tries to fool you into not remembering, into being selfish, into being stingy, into losing your temper, into wasting your time, into idle talk, into looking at things you're not supposed to look at. So the Yetzirah comes to try and trick you because you're making a good decision. So he tries to prevent. But when the horn is blowing, when the shofar is blowing on Rosh Hashanah, the Yetz Sahara gets confused. Our holy sages tell us this. The Yetz Sahara, the Satan, sometimes it's called the Satan, is confused by the shofar blowing on Rosh Hashanah. And he cannot interfere in your good decisions. So it's a great time to make good decisions to improve. If you have a problem that bothers you, that you have a short temper, or you talk too much, or you eat too much, or you're not respectful, or you're lazy, you want to sleep too much, you're, you, you push things off. I hope I'm not pushing the wrong buttons. You procrastinate about doing things. Rosh Hashanah is a good time to take, take on that problem. Can't take on all the problems at once. Right, kind of being there, just one problem at a time and take a little one. Don't take too big, don't take a big one because then you'll fail. And the Yetzirah will say, see, you didn't really mean it anyway. You belong to me. You're my property. So take on something that you can handle and start right away. Make a good resolution on Rosh Hashanah. And the same shofar is, the, the Sutton can't bother you. And the same shofar is blowing now. And, and the, the Yetzirah cannot interfere with your good decisions. That's on Shavuos, on Shavuos itself. But these days, we're now three days ahead, away from Shavuos. Shabbos, Sunday, Sunday night is Shavuos. The shofar is already blowing. Your neshama hears it. So we're free to really be much better. And the Yetzirah is not going to interfere. Not like the rest of the year. Okay, that's my message. My Rosh Hashanah, my, 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 my Shavuos message to you. This is why Hashem took us out of Egypt. That we should serve him with joy, with a sense of happiness and privilege and confidence and love of our friends, our fellows, fellow Jews. When you see Jewish people walking down the street, you don't even know them, your heart should be full of respect and love for them because they have the same neshama you do. Just our bodies make us look different from one another, but we all have the same neshama and the same father. <clears throat> okay, so we were saying, I was describing to you, I hope you got the message yesterday, a very deep, deep idea we were talking about last day, which why is it that when you say Shema and you say the silent prayer in the morning, it's a propitious moment for feeling great love of God and commitment and devotion. Why? And the reason is 
that you don't feel this at other times of the day because Hashem gives us his mitzvahs and he is feeling the same things at that time. So we're in harmony. If any of you are interested in music, you know, know about music, you know what means harmony. You know, it means discord. When, when, you know, you have a choir and people are singing a tune and one person is always <coughs> off key, it's, it's discarded. It's not, it's, there's no harmony. But if everybody sings together, it's beautiful. Even they sing different notes, it could be in harmony. So when we feel these feelings in Dominic, it's because we're in harmony, we're in sync with what's happening in heaven. Now, when we feel love and fear in our heart, it's because our mind is full of godly ideas and godly awareness, like we're learning about in the Tanya the whole time. And if you look around and you see a beautiful day like today, you see the, 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 the life of Hashem is revealed in the whole world. And your mind is filled with this concept that, that God fills the whole world. And he creates the whole world and he's greater even than the whole world, right? And so our mind is full of these ideas. Why is our mind full of these ideas? Our hakma, our bina, we, we, we develop the idea, we focus and concentrate on the idea with our das because Hashem is doing the same thing. Hashem is shining his light and energy into his quality of intellect, into his hakma. In other words, when our neshama shines into our chokhmah with, and we, be, we, we, we become sensitive and aware of godliness everywhere, so that leads the development of the whole process, intellectual development, which comes down into the right side of the heart and is felt like love in the heart and happiness and respect. And this, this happens because Hashem himself is shining his light and his energy and his essence into the quality of Hoffman. Now remember, essence is deeper, more essential than an intellectual quality. A quality is a, is a power of the soul, but the soul itself has to shine into that power to make it alive. So when the Shem shines his energy into his quality of wisdom. So our energy, our neshama also is aroused to shine into our quality of wisdom. And that's the, the, this, this mystical term that it uses here on the bottom of page 177. You with me on the Zoom? On the bottom of one page 77, where it says that when you go to Davin in the morning, and you say Shema and the silent prayer. This is a time, an auspicious time, which is called in Zohar language, it's called Moichin the Godless, which literally means big brains. Moichin is brains, Godless is greatness. In other words, Hashem is shining his energy into his infinite qualities, his spirits of Chochma Bina Das into his Chabad. So therefore, this comes down all the way, all the levels through the four level worlds of creation. And the, the Chabad of the of Atzilus is shining brightly. And the Chabad, next stage down of Bria, the world of creation is shining brightly. And the Chabad of Yetzira, the world of forms is shining brightly. And the, the Chabad of Asiya, the spiritual counterpart of our own intellect is shining brightly and our own intellect is shining brightly. <coughs> and that leads us to have feelings. And that's why we say Shema with our whole heart. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem. You get it? This is called Moichin the Godless. A very important term. And since this is what happens in the morning, that's why we daven in the morning. That's why when you wake up in the morning, you feel refreshed because Hashem gives you back your neshama. Where do you receive the neshama in your body? You don't receive it in your knees or your ankles 
or your arms, you receive it in your brains because your neshama is very refined, very subtle, <laughs> very sensitive. So it has to come in in the most refined and subtle and sensitive place in your physical being, which is your intellect, your chokhmah, the highest level of your intellect. So that's what he says here, because this is that's that's how you feel when you wake up in the morning and you the, the whole world seems like a new world. The world has new energy. And the world feels it. What happens in the morning, even before dawn? Sunday night, if you stay up, when you walk home at four o'clock in the morning, you'll hear the birds are singing. They wake up too. And they all start singing, it's beautiful. The whole world wakes up early in the morning. Who's the first one to wake up? <laughs> Our first blessing. Who gives the, 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 the chicken? Who gives the hen and the rooster the knowledge when exactly is the crack of dawn? comes from above. Hashem shines his light into Chachma and the chicken gets it. <laughs> the rooster gets it. And we also get it. And that's why we daven in the morning. But page 178. So too, he goes on now continuing with this, this concept. Write it down. Mochin. M-O-C-H-I-N. Mochin. These brains. <laughs> That's Aramaic. Moichin de, like in French language means of, godless. Means greatness. Brain power. in its greatness. In its greatest form. When the light of Hashem shines, when we have the essence of Hashem shining into Hashem's moichim of Godless. Got that, Sarah? That's why we dominate in the morning. Most people, oh, oh, I'm so tired. When you wake up, that's what's going on. And you feel the whole world waking up with you. That's why if a person stays up all night, doesn't go to sleep, comes the morning, you feel a new surge of energy. How come? Because that's what's going on. It's not just your body has a is responding to a, a routine that senses the right, that's the right time. Okay, so that's why down below page 178 in this physical world, it's a kosher time, a good time, a propitious time, for every single person to pray to Hashem. Sha'az makasher chokma ubina because that's when not just Hashem shines his light into his moichin, but we shine, shine the light of our neshama into our Chabad. Our moichin, and we connect our Chabad, our intellect, with what we know about Hashem, as much as we know, or as little as we know. A little child learns how to say Shema. To him, he doesn't know about moichin, the godless, he just knows Shema Yisrael. He believes in God with no, uh, no explanations. He doesn't know about Chesed, Gevurah, Teferis, and none of this stuff. He just knows he believes in God. He's a Jewish boy, he believes in God. So on whatever level a person finds himself, at this time, a person connects his intellect with Havaya, with Hashem. And if, he's, if, he, if he knows anything, 
Lahamik, third Hebrew lines, 178, Lahamik Daite, he thinks deeply into what he knows as much as he can, but godless and so into the greatness. Godless of the infinite. And so Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That's that's why this this chapter's a great chapter to learn before dominating. He goes on, middle of page 178. And therefore, since this is what's in his mind, this also becomes what's in his heart. So it becomes a special time. Laorer means to awaken. Esha'ava, the love, like we learned in chapter nine, that goes from your brains into the right side of your heart. And, and you begin to feel love of Hashem in your heart, like flaming fire. Behola Yamani in the right side of his heart. What happens when you feel love of Hashem in your heart, on the right side of your heart? You want sushi. No. Not sushi, not pizza. You want to be connected to Hashem. But how do I connect to Hashem? I, I can't hug him. What am I supposed to do? So how do you connect to Hashem? You can hug a mitzvah. You can kiss the mezuzah. You can take your hand and take a piece, a little stick with some chemical on the end and strike the matchbox and light a candle. That's how you hold on to Hashem. That's how you attach yourself to Hashem. Bekiyam ha keeping Torah, learning Torah, and keeping mitzvahs, me'ahava, but not doing it just going through the motions. Doing it with love in your heart. I know a young man, he makes himself very apathetic. He doesn't want to, he feels he, if he's gonna, not going to, if he's going to commit himself, he's going to get trapped. So he doesn't want to commit himself. He makes himself very apathetic. What's the difference between uh, apathy and ignorance? What's the difference between apathy and ignorance? Michal doesn't even know what either of them mean. It's not Spanish. Is it Spanish apathy? Should be a Spanish word, apathy. Apathy? Yeah. No, you don't know. What's the Spanish word for ignorance? Ignorance. <laughs> Ignorantes. Okay. A person can be ignorante. But apathy means he doesn't. Okay. So what's the difference between apathy? Chalabina. This is your style question. What's the difference between apathy and ignorance? Apathy is not caring. Ignorance is not wanting to care. Not knowing. I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. I don't care. <coughs> ignorance. I don't know. <coughs> apathy. I don't care. You're right on. You're very, very good. Very, very good. Right on the mark. You know, there was once a guy, he, he was a very good archer. He always hit the bullseye. They said, how do you do it? How do you always hit the bullseye? He says, because first I shoot the arrow and then I draw the bullseye around it. Okay. So once a person has... All has this idea that the motion the godless in the mind leads to love in the heart. That comes down the spinal cord and comes out as love in the right side of the heart.
And the love on the right side of the heart leads a person who wants to connect. We want to connect to, uh, to, the, uh, to what we love. <laughs> if you love sushi, you have to go to the store and get it. If you love somebody, you want to be together with them. Till so that do us part. So we cling to Hashem. Since Hashem is not a visible being, we can cling to Hashem by doing the same things that He does. And He does mitzvahs and He gives them to us to do them, like we said last class. Bottom of page 178. And it's exactly what we say when we say the Shema. How does the Shema continue? First we say, Hashem, you are our God. Hear, O Israel, Hashem is our God, Hashem is one. We make that declaration, and then we say, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, even if they're gonna kill you, and with all your might, with all your money, And these words which I command you today should be upon your heart and you should teach them to your children. It has to go down to the next generation. Your children, your children's children. After them. <laughs> and you should speak about them the whole time. When you go out somewhere, when you're sitting at home with your family, when you go out somewhere, when you go to sleep at night, these words should be on your lips. You say Shema on... on before you go to sleep. And when you get up in the morning, and when you go out, you should see them on the doorposts of your house. And you should tie them on your arm, for women spiritually, for men actually physically, and place them between your eyes. They should constantly be between your eyes. Men have to do it physically. Women, have, women can do it without physically doing it. And you should see them at your goings out and your comings in. Those are the same words that we write in the mezuzah. That's what's written in the mezuzah, not the Ten Commandments. I once took a mezuzah off a person's door to check it, and there was a photocopy of the Ten Commandments. That wasn't a real mezuzah. So that's my message to you girls for Shavuos. Chapterai, uh, make, make your good decisions now. Take on... <coughs> Your own problems, you know what they are better than anybody else. Don't take the biggest ones, take the smallest ones. The ones, one, that you, one little thing that you can handle. I like to recommend that you purify the air, the atmosphere around yourself by starting today to memorize your favorite chapter of the Tanya in whatever language suits you, English, Hebrew, Toam is Hebrew, Spanish, Australian, it's translated into all the languages, even to Australian. It's translated, you can get Sydney Australian or Melbourne Australian, different dialects. I have an Australian Tanya. You have an Australian Tanya, printed in uh, Australia. Yeah. Has Australia on the spine. <coughs> start it, start working on it. And every week, this could be your, your, your decision. Hi. Your decision for, for, for receiving the Torah. We have to add to our learning of Torah to show that we really want to get it. How can I show Hashem where I really want to get the Torah? I'm going to start learning it by heart. Every week, learn a line, two lines, three lines, whatever you can, and then build, 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 until you, you have a whole chapter. And then you go to, to, to two. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful Shabbos. Have an even more wonderful Yontif. And, and a wonderful Torah year. Torah summer, Torah year. Do you have the whole Tanya memorized? No. I learned a number of chapters which I later forgot. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm working the whole time at learning the first 12 chapters at one shot.
but I keep forgetting, and I probably keep forgetting before I finish. So you have to constantly review, constantly reviewing. That's how they used to learn in the old days before computers. Yeah. People could take the whole Talmud and you could put a pin through the Talmud, through all the toilet volumes of the Talmud, and they would tell you every word that it went through. So These people were great, great minds. Yeah. You listen to the Rebbe, Sikh of the Rebbe. The Rebbe talks such wisdom. And he puts together so many ideas from all over the place. Not everybody, it's, I mean, the ideas are all except Adi, and you can deal with them, but to put them all together, people don't know this. There's an idea here, there's an idea there. To, to know, it's just unbelievable. But that's how Torah was learned by, the, by our great teacher. <laughs> But it's very, very important to learn by heart. I, I've been working at it for 40 years. And it changes your, your whole, it changes your whole life. You see, because it's in your mind, it changes the way you see things. Yeah. You see things with, with, with different eyes. Good luck, good job. Welcome back. How is your vacation? Wonderful.